I guess the best way to start is to look at you all and say, obviously, we saved the best for last, right? This is the last group of the day, and um, it's been amazing. It has just, it's been an extraordinary experience to be able to celebrate with all of the grads who could get here in this kind of a, a setting that in so many ways reflects who we are. It's not the fanciest, it's not the most luxurious, but it sure as heck is awfully caring. It is awfully community-centered. And it always, always is focused around the students. And that, if that's not our mark that come out, then we've missed something. So thank you all for being here. J'aimerais remercier et féliciter vous qui ont choisi de poursuivre vos études en anglais au Collège Champlain. Nous apprécions la confiance que vous et vos parents nous avez accordée. Étudier dans un langue seconde demande la de la motivation, de la persévérance et de la patience. La fierté de votre réussite nous touche chacun et chacune. I need to start by thanking a number of people. First of all, to the parents, to the families, and for all, to all of those who've, who've lent a hand um, in getting you here today. Um, to all of you, please accept our deepest thanks. You make a difference to all these fine folks in blue, even though I suspect uh, if they're anything like my two graduates from this place where they don't remember to tell you every day it's still true. You make a difference. I think it's safe to say that there is not a single graduate here today who could honestly, honestly claim that her or his success was only due to individual effort. In this most challenging of years, the, the incredible people who, who teach who support, who guide and counsel, lead and inspire you, have never been more important, and I certainly hope never more appreciated. To all of you who are here as representatives, to, they're all around this place, to all of, to all of them, thank you. Each and every one of you made it possible for these fine graduates to be here. Lastly, I would like to thank our DG, Odette Coté, the chair of the board, uh, board of Governors, Francois Paradis, and the chair of the governing board, Don Smith. Now, Francois, you get off the hook a little bit this time because we now have two, two Champlain graduates who chair the most important committees in the college. The regional board of governors, that's Francois, and Don Smith, she's over there. Don Smith, so I might as well do this now, I was going to do it later. Don Smith is one of the three first graduates of Champlain St. Lambert in a career program. Um, three. Quite extraordinary. And yet here she is coming back to give something to the college. So to both of them, thank you. And don't be shy. Their example could lead one of you to be doing that someday. On that note, I'd like to turn the floor over to Anthony, who's busy talking to me, but, uh, to Anthony Singlis to begin distributing the diplomas to our graduates. Anthony? Gabriel will guide the, grad, the rest of the graduating class. Welcome everyone, our graduates and guests. 
It's my pleasure to help you celebrate our graduates from social science program. And we're beginning with our first option. I'm going to call to the stage the chairman of the board, Francois Paradis, to help me with the presentation of the diplomas for students in social science choice option. And our first graduate is Gabriel Desroches. Alexandre Fortado. <laughs> Laura Helliker. <laughs> Caitlin Hughes. Catherine Jolica. <laughs> Lori Lambert. Mutiba Masanga. <laughs> Anthony Porco. Joy Tan Tobias. And <laughs> Yasir Idris. Francois, thank you. We now continue with the graduates from Criminology Option. I call to the stage of my colleague, Christian Brosseau. You can apply, Christian. <laughs> Our first graduate from Criminology is Jesus David Benjimia.
Diana Burjawi. Samantha Flood. Samantha is also the recipient of the Physical Education Prize given annually to a graduating student who exhibits positive effort, motivation, and athletic spirit in the physical education courses. <laughs> Geraldine Marvert. Iram Uzma Mugal. Santa Jesse Rakatomaya. Eliane Rochelet. Eliane is also the recipient of the Sociology Prize for highest academic achievement in sociology. And one more graduate in criminology, Firas Jabib. We continue with the graduates from social science education option. Our first graduate, Madison Hamill. Justin Leo. Sarah Mode Michaud. Marisol Paras. And Lauren Rainsford. We are now continuing with graduates from the psychology option. I call to the stage Andrea Vitadek to help me with the presentation of the diplomas.
Our first graduate is Lydia Amrandi. Lucy Meplon. Cassandra Pegg. Cassandra is also the recipient of the Social Science Psychology Option Prize for highest academic achievement in the psychology option. <laughs> Emily Ramville. Ansa Stacy Rakota Malalala. <laughs> Jessica Rouillé. Katrina Savino. <laughs> Malika Sahib. And Beatrice Saint Martin. <laughs> From our World Studies option, our first graduate is Derek Belil Lawless. Derek is also the recipient of the History Certificate of Merit for highest academic achievement in history. <laughs> Tristan Gauthier Norris. Elisa, Miriam, here she is, God. <laughs> Anis, Idar, Aramid, Ura.
and Camila Quiroz Vasquez. For social science, world studies with math, our first graduate is Félix Caron. Our next graduate is Roxanne Potvin. Roxanne is also the recipient of the Social Science Certificate of Merit for Highest Academic Achievement in Political Science. <laughs> Thomas Prevero Tremblay. Thomas is also the recipient of the Social Science Certificate of Merit for Highest Academic Achievement in Geography. And we're going to backtrack to one graduate from Social Science Choice, Joy Tan Tobias. Andrea, thank you. I now call to the stage Chrissy Bell. Chrissy will assist me with the presentation diplomas for the Adams Pace program. Adams Pace is an inclusive program offered by the Riverside School Board in collaboration with Champlain College St. Lambert. Our first graduate is Michael Mor Morimoto. Arthur Paquette. <laughs> and Rochelle Saint Carrière. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the graduates from Social Science Choice, Social Science Criminology, Social Science Education, Social Science Psychology, Social Science World Studies, Social Science World Studies with Math, and the Adams Pace Program. Congratulations to all. Um, Doreen Assad was supposed to present this award. She's the mayor of Brassard. Unfortunately, as you can imagine at this time of COVID, being a mayor is anything but easy. 
And so um, I've been given the privilege of stepping in. Um, partly, I suspect, because I had the privilege of working with her father, Fuad Assad. Um, and so I'm just going to take one minute to mention a Fuad was an extraordinary political science and humanities teacher, um, became the chair of the social science department and probably has the record for making more of the hairs that are lacking on my head fall out than anybody else, and I'd tell him that and he'd laugh at me. But he was an extraordinary contributor to this college, and um, since the day that he passed, we've missed him. And so the, the award, the Fuad Assad Memorial Award for World Studies, is presented every year to an outstanding student who's graduating from the World Studies program. This year, the award goes to a student with a 34.127 code R. As um, we all know, in these times, the, the, the world is changing so fast, we're very lucky to have students like Derek Belil Lawless. I'd now invite Odette Cote, our Director General, to the stage to present the South Shore University Women's Club Award, the Mary Sear Award. So the Mary Sear Award is presented to a female student pursuing their studies in education and who has obtained a high academic merit. The award is presented to Caitlin Hughes. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, I don't want to put Jessie under any pressure uh, because she's the president of the student association for this year, but we were, we were bragging about your predecessor as being extraordinary. The good news is that people have told us that you are going to follow really well in her footsteps, and we're delighted that you're going to pick up the mantle, particularly, and I mentioned that, we have a student government who cares about academics and learning, and that's extraordinary. And so I'd like to invite you to the stage, if you would, please, to present the Champlain Student Association Student Athlete Bursary Award. Hi, everyone. So my name is Jessie Kurtz, and I am the current president of the Champlain Student Association. Last year, I had the pleasure and the honor of being an assistant in the CSA. As an assistant, you don't have the same level of responsibility, nor the same workload as the executive members of the CSA. You do, however, get a bird's eye view of the inner workings of the CSA. And although the events and activities planned by the CSA throughout the year always seem to run smoothly, 
almost effortlessly. People often fail to realize that there were committed executive members behind each and every event, volunteering their time for hours, for weeks, even sometimes months, to make these events come to life. One of these people was CSA's two-time president, Ms. Emily Payne. I knew that coming in as president following Emily was something big. Emily was an amazing president for the two years when she was there. So I knew the job description inside out, but something that I've come to slowly realize is that being a good president isn't something that can be expressed on paper. It's not something that can be studied or memorized, but it's something that has to be experienced. Being a good president is having back-to-back -back classes, but showing up to your meetings, smile on your face as if you've been on winter break for two weeks. Being a good president is following your instincts and not being afraid to make decisions that may result in a couple repercussions and a couple fights between executives, but these decisions were always made in students' best interests. Being a good president is keeping the ship together patching up holes along the way, and ultimately being the glue needed to keep the ship together. Being a good president is supporting the groups and teams at Champlain, showing up to Cavaliers events and showing up to events hosted by the clubs and societies at Champlain. Being a good president is somehow managing your schoolwork, your job, your interpersonal relationships, your family drama, your friend drama, and squeezing time to volunteer for the Champlain Student Association. And if there's one thing I can say, it's that Emily Payne did all of these things and so, so much more. So please give a huge round of applause for Emily Payne, the CSA's two-time president. I wasn't told that she was going to say that about me. Okay. It was an honor to serve as your president. The Champlain Student Association's student athlete bursary is given to a student who has demonstrated leadership in their sport and has significantly contributed to student life on campus. The recipient of this year's bursary demonstrated great leadership in their sport from the moment they walked onto their team. After playing their first ever season in the sport, this player went on to win RACQ Rookie of the Year 2018 and RACQ Team All-Star. In their second season, this person was awarded the RACQ Defensive Lineman of the Year 2019, Team MVP, and the Adam Taylor Leadership Award. This player continuously contributed to student life by volunteering for the CSA, getting involved in TEDx Champlain St. Lambert, Bell Let's Talk, and by organizing fundraiser fundraisers on campus to support their team's financial needs. Despite their demanding schedule, this athlete maintained an academic average over 85% and demonstrated exemplary leadership to his teammates. The 2019-2020 CSA Student Athlete Bursary is awarded to Tristan Gauthier Norris, captain of the football team. I would like to invite Odette Cote, the DG, back up to share a few words with you, if she would. So good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, students. 
about two, three, four, perhaps years ago, we had met in the, um, in the building for welcome day. Perhaps not all of you were there, but those who were there had asked if you wanted to succeed, there were three major elements that you had to consider. The first was making sure that you're in the right program. The second was being engaged in anything that you do in the college. And the third was graduation. Well, here it is, you're all here today. Obviously, you made it, and we're really, really proud of you. Alors, chers diplômés, nous voilà tous réunis pour célébrer votre réussite. Vous avez travaillé fort, vous avez fait des compromis, et vous avez grandi tout au long de votre parcours afin de recevoir ce diplôme tant attendu. Au nom du Collège, je tiens à vous féliciter pour votre engagement, votre persévérance, ainsi que tous les efforts que vous avez déployés pour obtenir ce diplôme. The education that you have received testifies to a series of obstacles that you may have encountered, rigor, critical thinking, team spirit, social responsibility, ambition, skills and well-being, as well as ethical principles that will guide you throughout your career and empower you as you come across other challenges throughout your life. The series of difficulties or pitfalls that you have overcome, that you have managed to circumvent, sometimes alone, sometimes with the help of your siblings, your relatives, your friends, have, are what have brought you here today. Graduation is just the beginning of a long journey where the field of intervention now covers the entire planet. The challenges are enormous and you will have the opportunity, even the duty, to contribute to solutions. It is with skills, innovation and grit that you will dare to intervene in changing the world while persevering the values supported by new generations. Strive for excellence, where the extra efforts will bring you pride and the expected results, propelling you towards new horizons, new challenges, and elevating you towards new summits. Know that during your educational journey, your perseverance and dedication have not only led to your success and self-realization, but also to the continued enrichment of Champlain. It is thanks to the strong sense of belonging of its graduates and to the vast network of alumni that we can offer excellent education today. As part of our pool of ambassadors, be aware that many of you will play major roles in Quebec society and across the world. This is why we invite you to be generous with your time and knowledge and to be part of our extended family so that you can contribute to the enrichment of our college and that of future generations. And on a final note, dear graduates, we are extremely proud of you. You have all pushed your limits. You have adapted to new ways of thinking and learning while being engaged in student life. The diploma that you received crowns the incommensurate academic and collective efforts that you have deployed through the, a host of extremely intelligent and exceptionally talented people. We wish you the very best success and please know that you will always be welcome at Champlain. Sincere congratulations. almost the last speech of the day, I'm sure. Um, you know, when we started this, I said to you, they saved the best for last. I admit I was biased, you see. You and I have something in common. We both have decks in social science. Now my son would tell you I got mine when dinosaurs ruled the land back in the 1970s. But we still have the same deck. I think it's pretty valuable. I think it was hard-earned, and I know yours was. So when I tell you we saved the best for last, I confess I'm a little biased. Um, I want to thank you. I want to thank you because 
you've lived through a challenge that's never before been experienced in the history of this college. Um, gosh, I thought the ice storm was bad. And then we have COVID. It's not the same deal. I can say with certainty that your graduating year is something you're going to remember for the rest of your lives. Nobel Prize, Peace Prize winner Malala Yousafzai, who missed her own graduation ceremony due to COVID, said that the class of 2020 won't be defined by what we lost to the virus, but rather how we responded to it. You know, you could have given up. You could have said, this is too hard. This is not worth it, and you could have packed it in. You didn't. You took up the challenge of switching to online learning, and you succeeded. And you, ladies and gentlemen, are the reason that we work at Champlain, because people like you are worth working for. You're living in a pivotal moment in history, unlike any before it. You know, despite our great technological prowess, our tremendous knowledge, we found a problem that's actually baffled us, and quite frankly, terrified many. A global crisis of devastation in every corner of the earth. And it's produced some pretty extraordinary results. Some of them bad, and then we just, all we need to do is look at the increasing rates of the pandemic and the number of people who've passed away, and, and some of them good, because we've seen extraordinary acts of kindness and charity. But who would have ever thought that the image of a superhero could be a healthcare worker dressed in scrubs, putting her or his health, even life, on the line for other people. Who would have thought that wearing a mask, that, dare I say, constantly washing one's hands, would be a sign of caring for other people? It's not the same place. Changes in the way we work, changes in the way we shop, changes in the way that we, we interact with each other, don't forget the social distancing. I mean, debate whether it's 1.5 or 2 meters, but stay apart. It, it sure does change relationships. And indeed, changes in the way we learn. The world you're going into is not the same as it was when you started at Champlain. And I suspect it's going to be changed for quite some time to come. Now, you look at that and you could start to say, gee, this is getting to be a pretty depressing grad speech. But wait, you've changed too. You started like every other student in the history of this college, sitting in a classroom or a lab. And suddenly it got turned upside down. You were forced to learn online at a distance. But something remarkable happened in that transition. You, you learned new ways to learn. You grew in your capacity to be more independent in your learning. And you know what? You did in months what it's taken many others years to do. That's quite something. So here's the thing. If you take what you've learned about agility, about adaptability, and if you apply them to the new reality around you, your chances of success increase exponentially. You know, it, it's, not, it's not so much a, a, a question of, yes, I, I think I can, but rather it's I have. And having done it once, and you did, you can do it again and again. Now, it's not going to be perfect. None of us are. In fact, you, you may stumble and, and fall and 
time of adversity, I don't think, though, that you're going to throw up your hands and say, I quit. When it happened with your learning, you picked yourself up, dusted yourself off, and you persevered to the end of your college studies. And you can and you will do it again and again. That's who you've become. Far more self-sufficient and far more independent than any group of students in this college before you. Now, I made a commitment last June. Some of you joined the Zoom that we talked about um, Black Lives Matter and about racism and a whole bunch of other things. And I said the college is not going to drop it. So I can't let it pass without asking you as you leave this place to take up the challenge. The inequalities of the treatment of people for nothing more complicated than the color of their skin has come to the forefront. And we can see that not all people are treated equally. And that's not right. So I was writing this, I was reminded of the words of Bob Dylan, and again, I keep mentioning Anthony, he said they don't know who he is. Well, if you don't Google him, he's an incredible, incredible folk singer and poet. And here's what he wrote. Yes, how many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he doesn't see? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Yes, how many times must a man look up before he can see the sky? Yes, and how many ears must one man have before he can hear people cry? And how many deaths will it take until he knows that too many people have died? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. Now, the thing about the wind is that it can be unforeseen and unnoticed as it blows by. Just like too often, prejudice, discrimination, and violence are. Or that wind can reach up and it can catch you right in the face and make you react to it. And we've reached a, cri a critical moment in history. How, how will we, how will you, and equally importantly, how will I, act to ensure true equality for everyone, irrespective of their race, color, language, or creed, in a time of incredible, incredible change. I call upon you as our graduates to take up that challenge and to make a difference. And it doesn't mean you're going to change the world. It may be as simple as pointing out to somebody, no, that's not the kind of language I use or the things that I engage in. It may be as simple as standing up for somebody who's beside you and being picked on. It may be a thousand other things, including running for public office, if you can. But it requires action and not just words. And that's the challenge that I'm asking you to take as graduates. Now, I said that you've demonstrated resiliency, talent, and, yeah, courage. To succeed when giving up might have been an easier choice. And we, all of us, are so proud of you. On behalf of everybody who works at Champlain College, I want to thank you for choosing this as the place that you studied. We wish you a future filled with joy and fulfillment. Again, thank you. Now, I'm going to ask you, do not throw your hats in the air, please, because it, it gets Dean, I don't know where he is, but it gets him a little concerned because he's responsible for some of the health and safety stuff. But I'm going to ask all of the people who are not wearing a blue cap and gown to stand up. Uh, all right, that's it. No, 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 it's not a phys ed class at the college. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. There's one last thing. Oh, no, I know. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, somebody thought I forgot something. Okay. 
we're going to do this, and we're going to have one last award, then we're going to do this again. But I couldn't help doing this at the end of my speech. Okay. The graduates of Champlain College St. Lambert, 2020. Lynn was right, it would be really bad to forget. Um, oh, please, have a seat. We saved one award for last, um, and it's really only appropriate when you think about it. The award, um, in, in the college, there's an award for the student with the highest average, but there's one for the student with the second highest average because it's still extraordinary. And the other one was presented to an er during an earlier group, but this one is being presented right now. And again, who could be better than a former Champlain student and graduate and the chair of our governing board, Don Smith, to do this? So I will turn the floor over to her. Thank you. Perhaps I should say that the best was saved for last. The Champlain College St. Lambert Governing Board Award is presented for the very first time as Champlain College St. Lambert moved from a campus to a constituent college one year ago this fall. As the chairperson of the Champlain St. Lambert Governing Board, it is my pleasure and my honor to present this award to the student who has achieved the second highest academic average from amongst the graduating class. This year, the award goes to Lori Lambert. Thank you, Don. This brings us to the end of the ceremony, to the end of a glorious day. Um, now, in the earlier groups, maybe you can call me superstitious, and yeah, that's probably true. I didn't stop to thank a whole bunch of people. I'm not gonna name all of them by names because apparently uh, it makes some of them feel self-conscious, but also I usually screw up and forget somebody. But I think that it would be wrong not to recognize the incredible work that the team in student services has done to pull this off. It's amazing. I mean, just this tent alone and the, the setup, organizing five different groupings and meetings, uh, making sure it all runs without a hitch. And each one of the five got better as the day went on. To them, thank you very much. To um, I better not forget to pat in the audiovisual because he'll just cut the sound off and then I won't get to finish. But he always makes me sound better than I am and I'm eternally grateful. And it's not easy to flip microphones back and forth and shift channels and do a thousand other things and yet it got done. <laughs> to the camera crew, who've been here all day and have broadcast all five of these ceremonies on YouTube because there are some people who couldn't make it. There was a limitation on how many guests you could bring. But thanks to them, other loved ones get to see it. Last year when we ran it, I think we hit about six or seven different countries. 
And I'm, I don't think we missed any of the provinces in Canada for our viewership. And that's quite something for the graduation of a college of our size. So thank you. Um, to the team in buildings and equipment for all they've done for the setup. And what you may not know is between each of these ceremonies, we had a team of students who came in and cleaned off, made sure that every chair you're sitting and everything that's in here that's within touching range was disinfected so you'd be safe. Um, that's quite something when you think about it. And they got that done in just enough time that we could have each of these things able to start right on time and not worry about your health. So that's a group of students to be really proud of. I don't want to forget any of the people. I won't name them name by name. I get in trouble when I do. Um, all of the people who've been here for various parts of the day, for the faculty who've been here to support your students, the administration, um, to the people in the governance, it, it's noticed. People notice that you care and that you invest and you give your time up for this. And last, but certainly not least, I would thank you, all of you at the back of the room, for being with us today to celebrate the achievement of our students. And in there, I stretch a little bit and hope that you don't mind that we take a little ownership, at least for today, in using that word. Um, it sure has been a different ceremony than we're used to, but we, we hope you've appreciated it. Um, I want to say one more thing before I dismiss the group to the students. This may be the last moment where you are officially part of the college. But there's something that I will tell you that I have learned over more than four decades you are always a part of Champlain, and Champlain will always be a part of you in the very best possible ways. We hope that we've contributed something that'll cause you to want to come back here and share it with us. Maybe some of you will come back and teach here. Maybe some of you will come and fill the roles uh, that Don and Francois fill. But you are part of Champlain forever, and we are so proud to claim you as Champlainers. Now, to respect government directives, we, um, we ask that as you leave the tent, please remember your masks and your social distancing. Um, there are spaces out here where you can take glorious photos. Around the front, there's a photographer. All of those things are um, available to you. Please get home safe and stay safe. And again, thank you all for making this day just so memorable. To the graduates, congratulations.